Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Divinia and I'm a final year mechanical engineering student in France. In this video, I'm going to be sharing some of the studying methods that I use to help me get through engineering. I just want to put it out there that these methods have helped me be at the top of my class throughout my technical degree. And once I entered engineering school, these methods helped me pass all of my modules without having to reset. So... They work for me and I hope that what I'm about to share will also be beneficial for you. Let's get into it. Before getting into the techniques, the first thing that you're going to want to do is to create your studying timetable. Now, I believe that consistency is key. It is extremely important to know when you're going to be studying subject A, B or C at which point of the week. So this should generally be done within the second week of your semester and it should include when you're going to prepare your lesson, the first revision that you're going to do and the second revision that you're going to do. So once we have that laid out, let's move on to the studying methods. Now, I just want to give a little disclaimer. These are the methods that worked for me because I am a visual learner. So if you are a visual learner, I hope that this would be able to do you some good. And if you don't know what sort of learner you are, then try these methods out because who knows, you might be a visual learner as well. Method number one is spaced repetition. Now, this is a method that I literally base my entire studying system on and I even practically base my timetable off it. So spaced repetition is a memory technique that involves reviewing and recalling information at optimal spacing intervals until the information is learned at a sufficient level. So for example, if you have class on Monday, you're going to want to review whatever you have learned on Tuesday and then the second review will be done two days later and the third review will be done one week later. So basically, my note-taking process during class is I jot down the maximum amount of notes possible and I write them down the way I hear it and the way my brain understands it. So I literally have scribbles all over the place, notes in all directions and errors going here and there. But what is important to me during the class is that I have the maximum amount of content to be able to decipher all of it during my first revision. And so as we move on to revision number one, what I do here is I reorganize my messy notes in a structured and logical way that helps my brain understand it. In revision number two, I just go through the notes that I made in revision number one and the same thing for revision number three. Method number two is using colors and diagrams. Once again, I'm a visual person, so these elements are practically my best friends when it comes to studying and note-taking. So I use colors to highlight important points and they sort of help me categorize information in my head. For example, if I'm solving an equation with all sorts of different hypotheses, the colors help me give codes to the points that I have to remember and this helps me visualize quickly and helps me revise efficiently. Another example is using mind maps. Now, I usually use this method to do chapter summaries and combining colors helps me sort of remember chunks of information based on the location on that mind map and its color code. Personally, for me, this method is extremely handy when it comes to reading-based subjects where you are expected to understand and digest and memorize huge chunks of information. So if you haven't quite figured out what your studying method is, I suggest you give this a try and see if you notice a difference in your abilities to retain information. Parsius. Now, in my opinion, this is the best and smartest way to prepare for examinations. Now, in most cases, exams are usually based on a certain pattern. So if you're able to identify that pattern, you will then know what to expect during your exams. Now, I try to use Parsius to its full potential in three steps. So step number one is study the bank. Now, what I mean by this is to try to get your hands on as many past year papers as possible and then try to identify a pattern. Are there questions that repeat? How often do they repeat? And so this phase might look something like this. And by doing so, you're able to sort of know what questions you have to prioritize if needed. Step number two is doing your past year papers by year. So this is going to be your first attempt at those past years. Now, the first paper that you're going to do is probably going to be the 
hardest because that's the one way you discover the subject, you get to know what the questions look like and you also get to sort of gauge the level of difficulty. And when you attempt the second pass year paper, this is where you sort of know what to expect. So you might notice a bit more fluidity when attacking those questions. Now, when you reach pass year number three, this is when you want to put yourself in examination conditions. Is your final examination going to last for two hours? Well, then set a timer for two hours, be focused and try to do the pass year paper in that time frame. So I think that this is very important because for example, like you could do a pass year paper in five hours and get like full marks, but it would not be the same if you had to do that paper in two hours. Step number three is by question. Now this is only if you have time. And what I do in this step is I redo all of my pass year papers, but this time by question. So for example, I take question one from 2017, 16, 18, 19, and I do it all at the same time and then question two, and then question three. And so by the end of this step, you would be so much more confident and comfortable with the exam and you will definitely know what to expect. Now, apart from studying techniques, I think that one of the most important things that I had to learn very early on in engineering is to get over my fear of asking questions. Now, the thing is, I know a lot of us are afraid of asking a stupid question or appearing to not understand something among all of your other classmates. But in reality, the thing is, you are probably and most definitely not the only one who does not understand. And even if you are, so what? Like, you are there to learn. You're not expected to know everything. So it's okay to ask questions. And on top of that, I feel like by asking that question, you have nothing to lose, but you have so much to gain. You could also try studying in groups. Now, I know that this method isn't something that works for everyone. And it honestly wasn't something that I used to do right up till engineering school. So in my first year, I would revise my tutorials and do pass your papers with a close friend of mine. And honestly, if it wasn't for him, I don't know how I would have gotten through my first year at engineering school because the thing is like it's so much more motivating and it's so much more reassuring doing something hard with people. You could also check out this video that I recently posted on how to survive engineering school where I talk about everything else that is not related to studying. So that's all for this video. If you did find it helpful, please do give it a like and do subscribe to my YouTube channel because according to YouTube analytics, only 11% of the people who view my videos are subscribed. So I would love to get those stats up and it would mean a lot to me if you could click on that subscribe button. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Ciao!